In this episode of In an Instant, we're doing a Q&A from within the Polaroid factory, talking to heads of film manufacturing and quality to crack off some burning Polaroid questions. Let's do it. My name's Andy Billen and I'm the SVP for film manufacturing. So basically responsible for the factories in Enschede and Monheim. I'm the uh, quality manager for film, global quality manager responsible for quality of film in Enschede and also for quality in Monheim. Okay, so what does that entail? In Enschede we, we do part of the chemical process. Right. We, we make the developing paste for the, for the film. And in Monheim they make up the other part of the chemistry, that's the negative and the positive. And I think that's, that's more or less in the hands of the Monheim team. Okay. But I have a quality manager in Monheim who oversees the quality uh, there. When I joined Polaroid, it still was a big corporation. And, but it, over the years that I was there, it was shrinking and it's getting smaller and smaller. And the film sales were declining. Sure. We had to let people go a lot and then eventually they announced that they were going to close down uh, the whole company. So kind of we, we got used to the idea. I left beforehand. I didn't want to wait it out. And then they started the Impossible Project, which at the time I thought was, was a very good name. <laughs> I, I did not believe it was possible. Um, and it was clear at the time, it was a very, very small team yeah. with, with big dreams, you know, maybe one day we'll make a million film packs, this kind of thing. And, and everything was in its infancy, yeah. like, absolutely everything. I think, I mean, you know a lot about our history, but the supply chain, the machines, the maintenance, the knowledge, yeah. you name it, we had to start from scratch. And it's been an incredible journey to yeah. bring it to what it is today. Do you think of the current film like a, essentially like a different product than the original film? Like, do you guys have the expectation that the film will ever be like it was in the sense, like whether it's light sensitivity, color reproduction, or are you sort of fine tuning a new kind of film? Because that's kind of the way I look at it. It's like a new artistic product. I, I think, I mean, we'd, we're always involved in incremental improvement. Yeah. I mean, it's a massive amount of time and effort, and money and energy yeah. put into refining our film. But we're also into revolutionary steps. Right? Sure. So, I mean, on the R&D long-term plan, we've got uh, very clear intentions of where this has got to go, and we'd like to get it back to yeah. where it was or even exceed that. And uh, philosophically, um, like how much of your minds are focused on like providing artists with this film versus making it like similar to a mass commercial product that like, like what, what's the angle for you? No, I mean, I think, it, that's what differentiates us differentiates from our competitors. Right? Yeah. I mean, it is an artistic product, and I think most people would describe this as artistic. I mean, is it each for the mainstream? Sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it's uh, the more people that buy film, the longer we can exist as a company. Yeah. But, you know, our roots is very much in the artistic uh, community based thing. This is what we are, this is part right. of our DNA, and it's never changed in all these years. For me, I use Polaroid for its artistic quality. Yeah. I'm not looking to reproduce reality perfectly. Yeah. It's sort of its own medium that nothing else offers. I think what we're looking for in the future is in to improve the usability of the film. Mm. I think there, I think we, we have some work to do. Um, so it's like mm, the temperature sensitivity of the film, I think you have to manage it carefully. Sure. Currently, we would like to make it more robust in that sense. There's the requirement to shield the film yeah, in yeah. bright sunlight. If we could uh, remove that requirement, that would also be nice to have. So that's the things are mm. that we have yeah. Yeah, as goals for the future. And maybe de yeah. it a little bit. It's, it's yeah. difficult to make a good Polaroid photo sometimes, and it could be a little easier. What is your philosophy about 600 and SX-70? Like, which do you prefer personally? Um, what kind of challenges do you face producing two emulsions for color? Um, like, I don't know much about the actual back end of what yeah. distinguishes them. Right. Basically, they are a very similar chemistry. So there is the sensitivity difference of the SX-70. It needs more light, mm -hmm. but we use the same, yeah, the same chemistry. We just we incorporate a filter in the negative okay. to kind of then bring down the the film sensitivity Interesting. to I the SX-70 level, and you have to yeah to to make that filter neutral, but a lot of the, yeah, it's very similar. In I, I sense a dramatic result in the color, but I guess that's because of that layer or the that adjustment. Like I, I sense like 
deeper saturation. When yeah. I'm shooting outside with 600, I'm getting a more pastel blue in the sky, whereas with the SX-70, it's a much deeper blue. Mm. Is that just a product of that? Interesting observation. <laughs> no, Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think so. But okay. Yeah. I'm not sure why, where it would come from. I think it's, so, so the chemistry is very similar. Could be that the filter is having some effect. Mm -hmm. on but the, I mean, yeah. obviously, a different camera film interaction yeah. as well. That's yeah. definitely, definitely yeah. playing a role. Yeah. I'm assuming you probably then use the, you know, the full. I'm an SX70 like guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have an SLR 680, an SX70, an yeah. SX70 modded for 600. So I'm shooting all these films kind of through the same lens. Mm. Um, but I, I find. Uh, personally, I love round frame mm. the most. That's like my bread That's and butter. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Really. What is something in the future that you would like to produce that maybe is like a dream film or? A uh, difficult one, otherwise I'm gonna uh, uh, create some expectations, right? <laughs> um, I mean, we're continually experimenting with could we do something different with the frame? Could we do something different with the chemistry? So I, I can't really answer it because we sure. don't know, but I mean, like the Reclaim Blue, we're continually yeah. trying stuff and really crazy ideas. I mean, we've tried to make it glow in the dark. We've tried yeah. to make it have sparkles. You, know, yeah. you name it, we've tried it. How much freedom do you both have to explore that kind of thing? Is that like fully encouraged here? It's about no, experimentation? Absolutely. Yeah, and innovation. I mean, yeah. you know, it's, you've probably got a hundred failed experiments and you've got one good one. It's also very fun for the employees. Something out of the routine and just try it. And right. Use your creativity. Yeah. And it's experimental. It's experimental with what we do as well. Right. You know, who yeah. knows what will come out of it. So I'm curious about the 8x10 production process. That, that's sort of been a mystery. Like, there's word that there was like a 8x10 peel apart machine that was converted or something. What is the process of creating it? Why is it so uncommon to be produced? It's, it's, a, it's a totally different process. Yeah, I think it, it, it was indeed a peel apart uh, product in the old Polaroid mm -hmm. times. And I think the, the founders of the Impossible Project, they, were, they managed to get that machine from the old Polaroid inventory in the US. So mm -hmm. it was brought here in a crate, and then we had to rebuild the, the yeah. machine here. We didn't have any anything for peel apart. So we made it a, we call it an integral film. Mm -hmm. So it's everything together and yeah, and, but it's still a different, it's also different machines. The machines that we make where we make 600 and SX-70 on it, they are the same or very similar, but the 8x10 is split up in different parts. So it has a negative machine and it has a, that is in the dark, mm -hmm. and it has a positive machine that's in the light. And then there, there's a lot of manual labor involved with mm -hmm. that process as well. So you need to hand assemble the bags with developer paste, we call pods, to the positive frame, and then all these frames had to be put in you know, little trays by hand, yeah. and then these need to be laminated by hand. So it's a very yeah. intensive. It's very yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's sort of an opportunity cost thing with how often you're able to like set aside the time to do that? No, so, I mean, the people who assemble it are the very same people that make the regular film. Right. So we've just got to balance it. Sure. You know? I mean, it's, it's, it's a limited market with 8 by 10 We're very proud we make it. Yeah, it's absolutely. Very, it's very unique. Um, but it's just balancing up, you know, where we can use our resources best. But yeah. as Vim said, it's very, very labor intensive. To, so to make a couple of thousand packs of 8x10 is, is several days of work. Wow. Yeah. And it's time that's being taken away from other exactly. production. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's got some very unique materials in it as well. And exactly. That we don't share with the other products. So these are giving us headaches in the past. That yeah, we had to we had to find an envelope to put the negative in. You think? I mean, how difficult would <laughs> yeah. an envelope be? But it took us three years to find an wow. envelope that would would wouldn't contaminate the film, would work properly, had the required uh, stiffness, had the required friction. Yeah, it's, it's very stiffness very and friction. <laughs> the, the main two challenges with anything in life. For more from the Internet Instant Adventure through the Polaroid Factory, check out our episode in the lab with Brian where we cooked up their new Reclaim Blue film, and the mammoth full factory tour video that features plenty more Andy Billen, which I think we all need. How, does, how do I look? That's good, that's good, you're nailing it. Whoa. That's, that's a Andy Billen just told me I was nailing it, so I think I'm having a, a great day already. <laughs> <laughs>